Hello, this is Pai Mazzotti of Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, today we're going to actually talk about a little bit about um, expat mortgages. Um, we're getting an increased amount of um, calls from expats, whether they're currently living abroad, whether they're looking to come back um, to the UK, um, they're looking for remortgage finances or actually purchases. Um, um, I've, I've just got an inquiry where an expat is actually in Qatar and they're looking to do a new purchase of a new buy-to-let property. We've got uh, uh, expats living in Australia, uh, Hong Kong, where they're actually looking to buy residential properties for when they're coming back. So there are a number of ways um, where lenders have evolved with criteria over expats. So we'll get into it. Um, the most straightforward, I suppose, um, expat inquiry that we get is um, the applicants have actually moved abroad. They've got a current residential property, maybe on a residential mortgage, um, and they are looking to either raise some funds out of it or actually convert it into an official buy to let, um, expat buy to let mortgage. So that's probably the most common type of inquiry we get. There's two issues around this. I would say there are a lot of expats who have simply moved abroad have carried on uh, having their uh, property on a residential mortgage and have not notified their lenders. Um, you're breaking the lender's rules, you need to be notifying the lender. And depending on which lender you're with, some lenders are actually quite good and they will grant you what's called a consent to let, which basically means it's a letter that says you're allowed to rent the property out until your fixed period is run out. Once you're out of your fixed period, you really need to remortgage that to a uh, expat product. Um, a buy to let product. So the first thing is guys, all of you people that have got it on a current residential property, you're not covered, you're breaking the lender's rules and really what you should be doing now is uh, either contacting your lender and saying, look, I've moved out uh, and, and basically uh, I need consent to let or um, getting it actually, if you're not within your fixed rate period, um, speaking to someone like us and we will arrange for a buy to let expat mortgage to be made available. Now, most buy to let lenders actually do not lend within the expat arena. There are more and more lenders joining uh, and, and that's good because rates have, have come down. Uh, product choice is a lot more there, um, especially around the fees because expat mortgages typically are actually not bad on, on the rates. They're quite on par uh, with um, buy to let rates, but it's really the fees that uh, make the difference. So really expat mortgages, um, the first thing is let your existing lender know. Um, now, what we have got is more boundaries around uh, criteria for for uh, for, an, uh, for expats. So, what you will find is some lenders have got high um, sort of 30, 40, 50 thousand uh, pounds minimum income required for expats. So, there are lots of different reasons why you would go to lender A to lender B to lender C. Um, they've got uh, rules around how long you've been abroad for, how long you've been, uh, whether you're showing on a credit report in the UK, whether you've got other properties in the UK, and they've all got rules around that. Some of them will say, look, you must have an existing residential if you want to buy a new buy to let. Others will say, you don't need to have a property in the UK. You could be, I don't know, working in Dubai and, and want to buy, invest in a property in, in the UK. So, it really comes down to it. There are lots of lenders with different choices and uh, someone like us will actually, um, uh, will take down your instructions, will find out your scenario, your, your circumstances and what you're looking to do. And then we'll sort of match that up with the various lenders. Uh, the documentation side of things is more complex as well. Obviously certification of certain documentation, proving your identity, proving your income. Um, what you will find is, um, generally more and more lenders will lend to employed applicants because they can prove their income. Now, there are lots of rules around employment. Majority of the historical lenders that dealt with the expat um, sector, they tended to say that must work for a multinational firm because essentially they wanted to make sure that the income side of things can be verified. If you work for, for example, KPMG or one of the big banks, then your income is, is likely to be more verified or, or quickly verified uh, than being self-employed working for a smaller firm. So what you will find generally, a lot of lenders will stay away from self-employed um, expats. We have got a number of lenders that will do that, but um, a lot of the products out there from a lot of lenders are actually focused on the employed side of things. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of really the process is 
Uh, it's a quick decision in principle from, from us. We gather the information and then we'll communicate with the various lenders. Now, the type of deals that we're doing, we're doing expats that are buying residential homes right now. So they're working, uh, the lenders will work off their affordability and they will buy a residential home because you may be working abroad, but your family will still be living here. So that's one side of uh, things that we're, we're helping with. Uh, expat within uh, limited companies, and more and more um, expats are buying within a limited company structure for tax reasons. Um, so that's fine. They're paying their lenders that will uh, offer that um, facility. Uh, expats within a buy to let, obviously environment, that's, that's the mo most common type. Um, and in terms of affordabilities, um, generally the various lenders have got di different rules. It's important around adverse criteria. There are some lenders that will accept certain adverse criteria. So I I've had this done a number of times where someone's moved to another country and they didn't know they had a, I don't know, a credit card payment due or a mobile phone due and they had some, you know, maybe a default registered against them while they were abroad. So there are various lenders that will accept an element of adverse. I mean, you can't be sort of, you know, going bankrupt, going to another country and then coming back. So, but, you know, there is, there is some leeway around lending criteria uh, um, around slight adverse. Um, so there are lots of options when it comes to expat mortgages. We at Niche Advice are dealing with these type of clients every day and uh, we'll be more than happy to talk to you about any of your mortgage needs. Thank you very much and hopefully um, this would give you some insight into how expat mortgages work. Thank you.